Hey everyone, so in the last video I talked about center of gravity stability and balance and how it relates to the base, but it really only plays a part in how we remain staying upright and being balanced. Base is a platform for which to apply and absorb force and we need to understand how force is generated, the direction of which it's traveling, and the planes that we are strong in so that we're going to be able to be most effective. So we're going to first break down force vectors and then we're going to break down planes. I hope you guys enjoy. Could you give me a little push in the opposite direction? Okay. Thank you. So force is defined as a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, there is a force upon each of these objects. Gotta love physics definitions. What we're really interested in is a force vector. A force is a vector quantity. A vector quantity has both magnitude and directions. To fully describe the force acting upon an object, you must describe both the magnitude, the size, and the direction. So for example, if we look at two football players colliding into each other, we have opposing force vectors. As long as both parties are matching the force, they're going to stall each other out. But if one doesn't match the direction or the size of the force, then we're going to see one hell of a sweet football tackle. It can also be a pull. So here in the tug of war, we have opposing force vectors being pulled in either directions, but because it's three verse one, we're actually gonna have a magnitude that overpowers. So the red team is gonna win in this situation. But this is a little bit oversimplified. So now we're gonna look at force in multiple directions. First, we have the horizontal component, which is the lateral slash horizontal direction of the force. Vertical component is the vertical up and down direction of force. Gravity is a constant example of downward force to equate for. And we have the resultant force, which is a combination of both force vectors or components. So here's another picture. We can see that there's a horizontal component, the vertical component going down, which leads to this downwards at a 45 degree angle. We can see this within, say, a side control position. So we have a vertical component in which gravity is pulling the top player down onto their opponent. And we have a horizontal component in which the top player is driving off their toes laterally into their opponent. The resultant force vector of this is the downward 45 degree angle, which is why you commonly hear Rob or I reference being ready to defend with frames at a 45 degree angle if you're the bottom player. So in the last video, we talked about center of gravity, stability, and balance, and how to keep our center of gravity within our basic support so that we're able to stay upright. Because we're talking about force vectors and planes, we need to be going over how to apply and absorb force in specific directions. If my feet are close together, I only have a vertical component to the force vectors within my legs, which is great for once again being able to keep me upright or apply force against gravity so that I can stay in the standing position. But if Kevin applies an external force horizontally, he's going to access my body as a lever and I'm unable to push an opposing force back into him. So if he shoves me, I'm always going to have to recompose my base or get swept or fall over. When I widen my legs and lower my center of gravity, I become more stable, as we talked about, but now I'm also adding a horizontal component to my base. I am now able to apply and absorb force to my left and right, and with my right leg, I am able to generate force into Kevin so that as Kevin pushes me, I am able to stay stable in my position. This only helps me within the plane of my left to right. If we're looking from a front to back perspective, regardless if my legs are close together or wide apart, you see that my base doesn't actually change within this plane. So even though I can now create a wider combat base, lower my center of gravity, if Kevin pushes me, I'm unable to absorb that force. That's why I have to now move myself into this proper fighting stance so that now my back right leg is going to be able to drive once again with the horizontal component of a force vector so that if Kevin pushes into me now, I'm going to be able to actually absorb this force by applying force back into him. All right, everyone, disperse immediately. We are prepared to use force. Watch what? We're not prepared any uh -oh. So in jiu-jitsu, we're always fighting another person. We have to be ready to apply and absorb force at any given time. 
what we're going to look at is the combat base and the technical stand-up. Combat base here, I have poor base. I am dead toes, and I am with my center of gravity right above my leg. I have no ability to drive anywhere but up, and Kevin is going to drive laterally into me, and I'm going to immediately fall over top of my leg and concede a sweep. Here, I'm going to have my leg in a proper position, but because I'm dead toes, I have the direction correct, but I won't be able to match the magnitude, and so Kevin is going to overpower me from here. Once again, I end up going down. Now I have live toes, but once again, because my leg is not in the right direction, all I'm going to be able to do is drive force upwards, not opposing the force vector in which Kevin is going to drive into me. I go down. In the last example, I have it right. I have my base behind me, live toes. So as Kevin drives into me, I am able to match the direction as well as the magnitude or even overcome the magnitude. And you're going to see me be able to pick up a single leg here. Kevin is unable to disrupt my base. From here, we're going to be looking at the technical stand-up. Right now, my arm is too close beside me, and it's straight up and down, so I'm only able to absorb force upwards, not at the downward 45-degree angle that Kevin's going to apply. I'm going to collapse over top of my arm and fall to my shoulder. In the next example, I place my hand far enough away so that I'm able to create a close force vector to what Kevin is applying so I can absorb it. But at some point, I have to take my hand off the mat, and I need my knee in the right position. This one, my knee is too straight up and down. And so once again, Kevin is going to access my body as a lever and I'm going to collapse once I take my hand off the mat. This time I'm going to receive my leg to the appropriate angle so that it's matching the force vector as my arm. So it's going to be actually able to replace it. So as I lift my hand off the mat, I'm going to be able to constantly oppose the force vector of Kevin and get to a standing position. Give, give, give me that knife! Oh, it's mine! Homer, you... The four. The four? The forks. Use the forks. Oh. So a plane is a real or imaginary flat two-dimensional surface. Offensively, we want to attack the weak plane, as in the narrowest plane, to overwhelm our opponent. Defensively, we want to use our strongest plane, as in the widest plane, to absorb force. The goal within the way that I'm going to display it is to attack the smallest surface area as possible. Under a cube, we can see a clearly defined plane, but we're going to have to imagine it when we're looking at the different stances that people use for base. So in this picture, we see a square stance, and the plane is going to be this rectangle. With the square stance, we're going to be able to absorb force from the left and right because we can see how wide it is, but it's not going to be very effective at absorbing force from a front to back direction. Here we see the plane has been extended a lot, so a ton of force can be absorbed from left to right, not too much from a forward and back perspective, but a little bit more. And we see an actual weak side of the plane where here we're able to drive it to a dead angle. So we're always trying to attack the narrowest part. Here with a uh, proper combat base, we see that we actually cover a lot of the plane in that forward and back direction. A ton if we're going into the direction of the legs from diagonal uh, directions, decently from the left and right, but the weak side of the plane is actually gonna be here hitting it straight on in the same position that it would have been from a square stance. And this picture is replicating a combat stance. And so we can see the plane here that is created is that green rectangle and the weak direction of that plane that we can attack at the narrowest angle is gonna be at that diagonal. So let's look at some sweeps in which we attack the weak plane. An idiot sweep is a sweep in which we attack our opponent for standing in a square stance by applying a lateral force direction against their weak plane. We can see that Kevin is unable to apply force into me. And so I'm gonna to shift the to center of gravity outside of his ability to post and complete a sweep. Now, if Kevin stands in a proper combat stance, he's gonna be able to apply force directly into me. And so what I, I can't attack him at this plane right now because it's strong. So what I'm gonna do is actually adjust my angle to create a dominant angle to attack the weak plane. By hipping up to the side, I'm now attacking him in a square stance. It was only a staggered stance when I was at this certain position in front of him, but once I changed the angle, I made it weak. So once again here, I hip out to the side. Look how now Kevin is square to me. Because I've adjusted the angle, I am attacking that weak plane. As I apply force in that direction, I shift to center of gravity outside of his ability to base, and he falls over. The tripod sweep is another example of this in which once I drop under, I'm going to block both his legs from being able to move to actively post, and I'm going to apply pressure at an angle rather than straight back so that I'm attacking the weak plane as I extend my left leg, shifts the center of gravity, and the sweep occurs.